We've been on top of this. We've been chronicling this all year for the last few years. What's been going on in the stand, the community. And this year is by far the worst I've ever seen. Records are being set in many cities. And yes, the faces of the people who are dying in these cities, in the urban centers. I ain't talking about in Wyoming or Alaska or Idaho. I'm talking about in the cities where the football teams and the basketball teams play at. In those places, it's us, and this was the worst year, which is so ironic that the year of Black Lives Matter was the worst year ever for murder. The numbers are in. This is the worst year ever. The year of Black Lives Matter was the worst year of black on black crime. Make that make sense. Make sure you support this channel. Make sure you share these videos. You must share these videos, it's important. You see they playing with the numbers. They cannot stop you from sharing. They can stop people from seeing, come from, from this coming up in the suggestions in the search bar and all that stuff, but they can't stop you from sharing this. People need to know what's going on. All the fake wokeness, all the fake protesting and all that stuff, guess what it's amounted to? The most murderous year. More black people were murdered this year than any other year ever in this country. And nobody's saying nothing about it. And it needs to get out. So make sure you share this. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you have it. They're chasing leads in two more killings late last night as the city of Philadelphia fast approaches 500 murders recorded in the year 2020. That's the highest number of homicides in the city in 30 years. Action News reporter Corey Davis has details on this latest investigation. Many people who work and live out here along Rising Sun Avenue and Lawncrest are hesitant to say anything publicly, but... They're hesitant to say anything publicly because they're living in fear. Gangbangers and thugs have taken over that Wakanda and they live in fear. And why is that cool? I got a bunch of people in my comment section every time I make a video and I say something bad about the community, they jumping down my throat. Pause. They, they calling me all types of names. But it's okay for black people to be prisoners in their communities, the thugs. They can't even talk to the news reporter when he come around. They ain't talking about talking to the police. Black folk can't even talk to the news reporter now. That's how bad it's gotten. Many people who work and live out here along Rising Sun Avenue and Lawncrest are hesitant to say anything publicly, but they are questioning why a gun and violence had to be used to solve a dispute. An argument ends in murder. It's a reoccurring theme this year in Philadelphia as the city approaches 500 homicides with 493 people killed so far this year. That's 40% higher than last year. According to our data journalism team, the number of homicides is the highest since 1990. The mayor's office is telling us most of the victims this year were killed by gunfire, many of them women and children. In a statement today, the mayor... Many of them, so, and, 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 and it's true, because if you go to the Philly, if, if you just look how many kids have gotten shot this year in Philly, it, it's true. But if you go to the gun memorial, you'll see. <laughs> Women and children, people not in the gang, it's not like, well, the, you know, gang, that's the gang, let the gangs do that, they're they going to shoot it. No, I get that. I get gangs and criminals, they're going to cruise and clicks, they're going to do their thing. It's not just them. It's law-abiding citizens, people minding their business. said, quote, as we 
work feverishly to slow the spread of COVID-19 and get our lives back to some sense of normalcy, we are doing the same with gun violence, our other long-running public health crisis. One of the latest murder investigations involves the killing of 24-year-old Ebony Kitchen. She was shot and killed along the 5800 block of Rising Sun Avenue in Longcrest. Police say she was arguing with a male and female around 11 last night when a gunman who was not involved walked up and shot her to death. Uh, we found eight spent shell casings on the highway. Most of these shell casings were a few inches, some were just a few feet from where the victim was laying on the street and pronounced dead. Another deadly shooting happened around... That dude, she was arguing with a man or woman. Another guy walks up, had nothing to do with it, and hit her eight times close range. He was obviously trying to take her life. Another deadly shooting happened around the same time, but this one was along the 2300 block of North Cleveland Street in North Philadelphia. When police arrived on location, they found a 43-year-old male laying on the sidewalk. He was shot in the face and multiple times in the left side of his torso. These latest shootings bringing the city closer to the grim total of 500 homicides with just two more days remaining in the year. The mayor's office is also telling us that they are creating new crime prevention efforts while adapting to a $750 million cut to the operating budget. $750 million cut to the operating budget. How is this defund the police thing working out for the black community? I saw a bunch of white liberals with their signs everywhere in D.C. You driving down the street in June or August, you might you might be stuck in stuck there for for an hour because it was a bunch of pasty white liberals with signs talking about defunding the police. How's that working out for the black community? See, we can't do like the people in Bankhead and and. and, and <laughs> and create our own police force, <laughs> like the people in Buckhead, Atlanta, and just put our money together and get our own police force. When you defund our city's police force, we can't refund it. How's that working out? How's the defund the police thing working out? Well, defund the police is not, we're not trying to get rid of the police. We're just trying to take some money from them and put it in other areas. Okay, how is that working out? We don't want to get rid of the police. We just want to take money from them. How is that working out in the black community? Before we are one day away from the end of 2020, and for the city of Birmingham, it has been a tragic and deadly year. As of yesterday, there have been 105 murders in our city. This is a breakdown of those murders by month. Mayor Randall Woodfin and Police Chief Patrick Smith talking about this problem today. Alan Collins is live at police headquarters. And Alan, what did they say the city can do to bring these numbers down and to end these murders? Morgan, they said it's very simple. The Birmingham community, the mayor and the police chief here at headquarters, are both saying that they are doing all they can to bring these murderers to justice and also to bring a peace of mind to victims of the family members of victims in this case. But they will tell you very quickly, they can't do it alone. 105. That's how many murders have happened in Birmingham since December 29th of 2020. Mayor Randall Woodfin and Police Chief Patrick Smith showed frustration at the reduction in overall crime, but still seeing a 10% increase in murders in Birmingham. The mayor says it's not due to a lack of work or commitment by the police investigators. There are people who refuse to cooperate on the case for genuine fear of retaliation, for sharing what they know. There are people who refuse to cooperate on the case because they don't want to be known as a snitch. Of the and I talk a lot about black mayors and black police chiefs. Of course, Philadelphia, the city we just covered, they have a black female police chief. This city, Birmingham, has a black mayor, black police chief, black city council, everything's black. And it's still the citizens are being held hostage by the thugs and the gangbangers. And I get it. 
I I understand why you ain't gonna say nothing. Why the pro blacks ain't gonna say nothing to these niggas? I get it. I get why the pro blacks ain't gonna say nothing to them. But it's just annoying when when you when y'all come for me so much, y'all say nothing about this. People in Birmingham are hostages. Hostages. Want to be known as a snitch? Of the 105 murders, only 43 have been solved. The main reason justice has not come for family members are the lack of witnesses coming forward. Crime doesn't simply fall at the doorstep of the police department only. This is a violation of our communities. And we need the community involvement. Chief Smith says while the new strategies and technologies are helping the department, it has been hurt by the pandemic. Our number uh, recently has been as high as 47. Uh, and yes, it does hamper our ability to provide service, meet the uh, needs of the community, and also respond to calls. Another obstacle they have to deal with. Now, the mayor and police chief, they're asking folks in a neighborhood community, get together, reach out. Let them know of any possible threat that's happening there or something going wrong. That would certainly help. They, without that community involvement, it's going to be a lot harder, they believe, to bring those numbers down. In Birmingham, Alan Collins, WBRC, Fox 6 News, on your side. We are on... 2020 is a heavy one for the Charlotte-Mecklenburg Police Department. They're investigating... 123 homicides, a record number of killings for the city in a single year. WBTV's Paige Peroso joining us live right now. And Paige, that number is weighing on many in the department as well as the city. It really is, and that's because for so many, it's not just a number. Each homicide represents a person no longer with us in a family who's grieving. Police say trying to get answers for those family members is what encourages them to keep investigating. 2020's been a hard year. A worldwide pandemic paused life as we knew it. But here in Charlotte, police continued investigating something else infecting the city. It's hard to put an explanation on it, why someone would pick up a gun and to resolve a problem. 123 people killed in 2020. Here it is again. We have 123 community members that we've lost. And my investigators every day are dealing with their families, are talking to their families, the secondary victims. I mean, the impact of a homicide can be measured in a number. But that number, a new record for the most homicides in Charlotte in a single year. The last time Charlotte had this many homicides was during the crack cocaine epidemic in 1993, where 122 people were killed. This year, Lieutenant Brian Crum says the why is harder to pinpoint. I think it's just people's willingness to resort to a firearm over really minor things. Each homicide taking its toll on the officers. I'm at a loss for words. The community. This is really shocking. I think it's just general shock. And each family. Time and time again, it's a small percentage of folks in our city that are involved in a large quantity of the violent crime. So we see significant overlap. Police are targeting that overlap by expanding their use of the NIBIN program, which stands for the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network. The program helps them track guns and bullets used at crime scenes to connect them to other cases to hopefully lead to more arrests of dangerous criminals. Reporting live in Charlotte, I'm Paige Peroso, WBTV on your side. Paige, thank you. Although 2020 is the highest number of homicides in Charlotte history, it's important to note comparing Charlotte in 1993 and in 2020 is hard to do when you take in the huge population growth over the last two decades. Per capita, the homicide rate is about half in 2020 than what it was in 1993. You're looking at a scene that has become all too common in the District of Columbia. Flashing lights, police tape, and young lives lost too soon. An 11-year-old Javon McNeil. 15-month-old Carmelo Duncan. A 12-year-old boy was walking with his stepfather. No one has been arrested for killing this little boy. It's devastating. We are African-American black women who have sons of our own. We're afraid for ourselves and our children in the D.C. streets. These women did not want their faces shown on camera, but they did want their voices heard. They say constant exposure to violent crime has ruined their mental health. And 
DC, we had 200 murders this year for the first time in almost a decade. It's out of control. And if you remove the black population from DC, we would have no murders. None. Per capita? Talk about that per capita. Kansas City, Missouri set a grim new record when it comes to murders. As of right now, the total is 174 homicides. Tomorrow, the mayor, city council, and police department will have a special ceremony to remember victims. They will also reveal a new action plan to curb the violence. KCTV5 stands for you. Tonight, investigative reporter Angie Ricono takes a closer look at how this year is ending and what happened nationwide. 2020 will be remembered for a lot of things, coronavirus, economic problems, and violence. That's true in Kansas City and nationwide. Final numbers will soon be turned over to the FBI, but early information already paints a clear picture. There's no, no sugarcoating it. There's no other way to say it. Overall, this was a very, very violent year. This is absolutely uh, the highest number of homicides that we've had. Kansas City's murder rate soared this year, and that's pretty much what happened across the country. Early unofficial numbers show murders are up 29% nationwide. Kansas City's 28% increase reflects what many large cities are struggling with. Here's how we compare to departments similar in size, demographics, and area they cover. St. Louis, Atlanta, and Denver have similar increases, a 30% jump or more in murders. But four similar departments fared much worse. Seattle, Memphis, and Fort Worth had increases of more than 50%, and Milwaukee saw a 110% increase. At the other end, Charlotte saw a lower increase, for whatever reason, Albuquerque and Oklahoma City actually saw a decrease in murders, bucking the nationwide trend. Overall, we've seen a particularly bloody year. Why do you think Albuquerque and Oklahoma City had decreases in murders, while all those other cities, many of which we're covering in this video, have had increases? Can anybody guess why Albuquerque and Oklahoma City <laughs> had decreases and all them other cities had increases? Anybody? Can we answer why yet? We'll be unpacking this for, uh, for years, if not decades. Ken Novak is a criminologist who watches trends and crunches data. Answers aren't easy, but some obvious things jump out. Economic unrest from coronavirus and civil unrest across the nation. Those are two huge factors that influence, um, that influence violent crime in general and homicides in particular. Police also question if emptying some jails played a role. Kansas City's police department acknowledges a rough year, but points out in a pandemic. They, he's a criminal. This guy's getting paid. These liberals, they go to these schools and get these degrees in criminology and liberal arts, and it ain't worth a damn because they never going to address the real issue. And she got to know, they're wondering if emptying some jails. They are wondering... If empty in some jails <laughs> might have an issue or might have had something to do with the increase in homicide rate. They wonder. But one thing he's never going to say, that criminologist, criminologist is never going to say one thing. He's never going to address who's doing it. He's never going to address Hughes doing it. And he'll always have a job. <laughs> so I mean I I don't blame him. He don't get fired. Demick with a soaring murder rate, they improved clearance rates. The unrest that we had over the summer, um, it taught us a lot. But despite all of that, we still believe that we have a good relationship with our community. We believe that our clearance rate is a reflection of that. Kansas City's clearance rate this year was 72 percent, a huge improvement from last year's, which was 55 percent. 
the nationwide average is 61 percent. Many police departments say they struggled with their clearance rates this year, and you can certainly understand why. They had a lot of staff members quarantining. It was difficult to get good face-to-face -face interviews because of coronavirus. And then a lot of people are walking around wearing a mask. That makes identification difficult, and those people wearing masks certainly don't stand out. Reporting in Kansas City, Angie Ricono, KCTV5 News. So now, finally... And I know I skipped a lot of cities, but look, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, hit that PayPal, hit that Cash App, donate, man. Support the channel so we can make more videos like this and get to your city and expose what's going on. But the biggest story of this year, other than, of course, Floyd, was Breonna Taylor. And how wrong it was that Breonna Taylor got killed. And it's the worst thing that ever happened. So you would think that the city of Louisville had a pretty low crime murder rate. Very low murder rate because that was the worst thing that ever happened in Louisville, right? You would just assume that like, damn. Nothing nothing ever happens in Louisville. The way they're acting. Gene Wake 3 News at 6 with John Bull, Shannon Kogan, Chief Meteorologist Kevin Harnett, and Sports Director Ken Taylor. It's a grim tally to end 2020. Louisville reports 171 murders this year. That's a 45% increase from the previous record in 2016. And it could go even higher with a day remaining before the new year. Tonight, Way 3 News reporter David Mattingly takes a look at the pain behind those numbers. Behind the skyrocketing numbers of homicides and people injured by gun violence in Louisville, are the uncounted loved ones who are ending the year in grief. The wind chimes play a song of heartbreak, a reminder of a life taken by violence. They are a memento from the funeral for Anne's daughter. Now I just want to know what happened and, um, and get some closure. And I'm sure that's what all the families want. Keen's daughter, Kim Jarbo, was victim number 103. Now, this woman, Kim Jarbo, I did a video on her. I forgot what number it was. It was, um, maybe it was inside the Breonna Taylor drug cartel episode 10, maybe part 10 or whatever. But anyway, she was an activist down there. You know, she was woke, very woke woman very involved in her community her son was killed was 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 a victim of gun violence she was in trenched in the wokeness in the community and the protesting and all of that stuff and she was killed by a carjacker Charbo herself was an anti-violence activist, driven to try and bring peace to the city after her own teenage son, Anthony Elliott, was shot and killed years ago. <sighs> her own son was killed a few years back. Of course, she, was a, she had a biracial son. Because that's who gets killed in the streets of these cities. Black people. And she was with all the marching and the protesting. And God, dog, a carjacker came and killed her. Some fool and killed her son. Not and killed years ago. Even though I grieved really hard for my grandson, I had no idea how she really felt until now that I've lost her. And Keen and her family are not alone in their grief. As of Wednesday morning, 2020, it brought 171 homicides. 585 have been wounded. 136 victims were male, 95 under the age of 30. 
2020 was a year that brought COVID-19 and social unrest, but the deadly spike was already in motion and the bloodshed was unrelenting. 2015 through 2019 was tied for the deadliest five-year period in Louisville's history. And if you bump that forward one year now, 2016 through 2020, that is by far the deadliest five-year period in our city's history. And that's not just driven by this year. And Keene prays for an end to the killing in hopes that no other mother or grandmother has to feel her loss. Just take it one day at a time. Sometimes I'm one hour at a time. Um, just to get through it. She was my very close friend. This white woman is going through what so many black women go through. I feel sorry for this white woman, but for every white woman like this woman right here that's lost her grandson and her daughter, it's a thousand black women who have gone, had gone through that. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you support the channel via PayPal, via the Cash App. We're going to keep bringing you this hard-hitting news in 2021. We're going to keep getting called the coon in 2021. We're going to keep getting called a butter biscuit eater in 2021. We're going to keep getting called a step and fetch it in 2021. We're going to keep getting called a sellout in 2021. We're going to keep getting called Uncle Ruckus in 2021. But this stuff got a light need to be shined on this stuff, man. This stuff is sad, man. And some of y'all will only feel sorry because this white woman gone through it. But it was her proximity to a certain community whose name I won't mention, Wakanda, Blackistan, that caused her so much pain. So get in the comment section, like, subscribe, donate. Peace. I'm out.